Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, Comrade Mapena. End of. Njamba. Comrade Slul. Hey, Yeah, we. As uh, Nube said, uh, it's a long time ago. Yeah. I think we met when Methodist was still housing our our people there. Okay. Those, yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, there might be some comrades here I have not uh, realized. Please. Abu Shuguti Nibangani Sanbonan Nani. To be honest with you, it is the gatherings like this one that keep people talking. We need to talk and sing a pale and column. We need to talk. And when we talk, somebody is gonna listen. We need to talk. And I thank you very much for this kind of a setup. Um, you know, there has been a, okay, he has just said that I must introduce myself. Um Pondo uh, I'm the former chairperson of Zapu in this province, South Africa. And uh, currently I'm a member of the NPC. Uh, I wanted to be very clear which I've been uh, requested to come here and, pre and represent the leadership in this province of, of South Africa. And um, I'm glad, I'm excited. I'm learning a lot from the comrades and hopefully also I'm going to learn a lot from the questions that are going to be posed. Um, you see, our history as a country has taught us or has given the young people what you can survive through lies. You can survive through killings. You can survive through suppression and oppression. Young people, when they are growing in that kind of a setup, the mind is for me to get this or that. I must behave this way. I'm glad that somebody spoke about the power that is not being given to young people. You see, there is no power that is going to be given to young people because the system has designed that particular system for the young people to be despondent, to be, to be, to be uncertain about the future, uh, to be hopeless, so that in the midst of their hopelessness, the only way to do is to find their way to neighboring countries or to diaspora and leave the system the way it is. The system has designed it to an extent which the same young people whom we believe they must stand up and do something. <coughs> Comments, they are not going to do it because the system has made them with Bangaboni the potential that they do have. And remember, they did not do it to young people. This thing begins when you look into the issue of Ipu ground. Beside what we already know about what happened, one of the major things, it was not only to exterminate Amandebele and those who were prosabu. It was also to create fear to everybody, including those who support Zan or who support Zan. If you create fear and uh, people will grow with that fear, that's why today when we think of Zan PF, we think of death, we think of being punished, we think of all sorts of things because it has been created and it has been designed properly. Somebody here said, this system is well organized. It is well organized. Not organized only, it is also well resourced. Never undermine a well resourced system. And uh, now, as Zapu, we know 
our ideology is human rightism. And out of human rightism, so many things come in. But there is this one that I want us to understand from this point of view, is that my presentation here about the 23rd circus is going to be around human rightism because it is the human abuse that we experience in all fronts as a result of the regime that we do have uh, if you look at everything that has collapsed and it keep on collapsing it is because there is no regard to the rights of our people whether the elections are stolen day in day out whether there is suppression and oppression it is because they don't care about our rights we are here today talking about what happened on the 23rd we should be here talking about that Zimbabweans have spoken Zimbabweans have won so what is the way forward towards what development but we are going back and hopefully comrades we are not going to come to 2028 and still speak about the what the same thing which has now become a disease that there is always an aftermath of speaking about what we failed to do zapu is a part of uh, three c's not uh, a <laughs> <laughs> Trust, not, uh, <laughs> is a pass a part of consultation <clears throat> compromise and consensus and uh, probably uh, the, 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 the weakness of Ngomo was always this 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 is that's why professor much has one day or he kept on saying the reason why we are here is because umdala always wanted national he wanted this togetherness even on circumstances that did not demand them but understandably so the old man knew what he was doing he was building a nation therefore today let's look upon what transpired having said that Zabu is a part of consultation compromise and consensus Every time we approach elections, we look forward to the throes of a new Zimbabwe. A country with no political virus that pushes citizens to the diaspora. A, we look forward to a country without teen disputes who hold power for themselves, their families, and their friends. These people who loot state resources and violate human rights with impunity. Elections are an expression of the will of the people and form a central feature of any democratic setup the electorate refuses or always refuses to accept elections outcome when it is clear there has been an infringement or violation of civil rights and the right to choose what we have noticed so far is much repression suppression of people uh, or people's basic rights to choose their representatives or representatives this systematic erosion 
of the right of the people to choose has been flouted and abated. That's why we are here. We are talking about things which have been happening in every corner. Even the ZANPF themselves, they will tell you, in this year, MDC1, in this year, MDC1, we keep on. Then you wonder, go nagelepi. Where are we missing the point in order for us to see Fige Ekenan? And then we've noticed and witnessed the flouting of electoral processes and procedures and the ripping apart of our country by the ZEC under the stewardship of the current commissioner. we call upon a total electorate reform and this should be followed immediately by a process of rehabilitation of the ZEC. Beside all the things that we do have in mind comrades and we are busy with one of the major toy toy that we should do and they continuously so is to toy toy over Zek. Mm -hmm. Probably we, we we are misdirecting our attention because we've got this feeling that Zek is Zano. Zano is Zek. But probably we need to go direct to Zek. As Zapu, we have issued a statement rejecting the circus which unfolded on the 23rd of August 2023. A number of issues were noted by Zabu, such as the cost of participation in the election. Comrades, that money on its own, on its own, was an abuse of power. That people should fork out 20,000 US dollars because when I we ask to you are gaining from the looted coffers that on its own made the ground to be uneven. Also, the demilitation which was designed to bring about ZANU PF supporters in the strongholds of the other opposition. We need to do away with that. Including all the general chaotic situation which unfolded, like the voters' role. Those things need to be attended as a matter of agency. If it means all of us, we are to form a united front in order to, co to, to correct these imbalances. So be it, comrades. Hence, I began by saying Zappo is for consultation, compromise, and consensus. The ground wasn't even, and we are surprised by the endorsement of this illegitimate exercise by some quarters. Some of them, they're just across the street. Believe you me, if ZANPF is given the urge, the power by the ANC, comrades, there is nothing we can do. Zimbabweans, we are on our own. And then, we are upheld by the role played by some regional actors who have ignored human rights abuses, widespread intimidation, etc. We need to stand firm for democratic values. Comrades, we need to stand firm for democratic values. But the question still stands. I arrived in South Africa 8 January 1988. When I landed in Johannesburg, you can calculate how many years. Mkugene Mazwen. The same thing I'm talking about that the young people are forced to flee the country. They are so squeezed that they cannot breathe at all. 
And then they know that when these young people flee the country, then their home and dry, nobody will stand up and challenge them. If we were not accepted or accommodated by South Africa and the other neighboring countries, and we were all squeezed in our country, comrades, believe you me, we could be talking and speaking about a different setup. Because the system designed it, which no one is going to stand against us as long as we create a situation whereby all those frustrated, aggrieved, they should only see the solution as finding their way out. And then we demand a total overhaul of the electoral system and a revisit, as I've said, of the delimitation. We can't live on the dangerous prescription given to us by ZANU-PF, prescribed to our people this way. The reason again why we are talking now, let's be honest, it is because of the CCC. Commit uh, love. We all know what happened. We all know how they are raw, they have been robbed. That's why we are here to talk about it. Obviously, we know that beside what is in the open, which has happened to the CC, we know that on the local government, including in some other areas, people have been intimidated is either to stay away from voting or to vote for the Green Party. So all this, if we see it happening now to the CC, CCC, which has, which has got a quite number of members of parliament, what about those small parties which are somewhere in the corners of the country? It's worse. What I'm saying is that we are in a situation whereby we have to form a united front in order to face this monster. It's not going to be easy, comrades. Make no mistake about it. It's not going to be easy, comrades. Probably talking beside the lines has to come to an end. And for it really to come to an end, we need setups like these ones where we will speak. And then, if we don't challenge this as well, it will mean a continuation of nepotism, tribalism, and marginalization. We haven't even gone to understand the nature of the nepotism, the nature of the tribalism, the nature of the marginalization. Generation. We have never even spoken about the development which we are supposed to be talking about now. Development. We are still talking about the stolen elections. Not once, not twice, but many since 1980, the elections have been stolen. Yes. I remember vividly clear that Margaret Thatcher or the UK government. In 1980, before the elections, they sent a delegation only to go and they inspect the industries in Zimbabwe. When the delegation went to give a report, they said, the industry in Rhodesia can only be managed by Ungom. Margaret Thatcher came and said, it doesn't mean that if you are voted by the majority, we'll hand over the government to you. We want somebody who is going to be able to manage the, what, the industry. He was reporting, he was saying, which even if the, it is perceived by then that the Shona people are the majority and they will easily vote for ZANU, they won't give Ngabe the, the, the what? The, 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 the government, but they will give him Kongo. Unaware that Lord Soames had been bought by the Americans. That's where the problem began. Unaware of that. He even said, no, 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 no. We, if Ngomo is given that kind of run, we shall turn Joshua Ngomo into a Jomo Kenyatta. 
the American said, Margaret Thatcher, you are dreaming. Nkomo has got the zebra. Kenyatta has got no zebra. What are you going to do with the zebra? At the end, all is history. So I'm talking about the stealing of the election. That is a long thing. We are still talking about it now. Instead of talking about development going forward. And then, um, it should be noted that vociferous political posturing um, and the fundamentalist legal opinions that are all over are not going to give us Zimbabwe. We need to, all, in all forms of life, everybody, we need to shake up and say, guys, what are we doing? How are we going to do this? Yes, we understand what we are fighting a brutal system. But at the end of the day, are we going to fold our arms and say, no, by again, Benz, I, <clears throat> no, it can't be that, comrades. A time must come when we are to challenge collectively, united. And then, Sadiq has asked all those grieving to follow available processes and channels to voice their concerns knowing very well that no one will listen once you see Satic giving a report even if they say it's a preliminary one saying this you must know it's done and that's it look at this one the president has been inaugurated he has appointed the ministers Comrades, he's done. He's done. Even if tomorrow Saturday comes and say the elections were blah, blah, believe you me, he's done. Unless you don't know the history of Zanu. Saturday has mentioned that established legal procedures and processes, yet it is aware that the very same established legal processes and procedures are run by captured judiciary. Probably, comrades, we need also to create a situation when we become united to also target the judiciary in our way to it. Because once we keep on saying Zanu this and that, let's go to those structures that are being used and hit them hard. All regional actors should come clean and stop protecting the ruling party. At the same time, let us tell our people that they are on their own. We call upon them, our people, to determinedly resist the oppression and defend the right of different views with no fear of retribution. In conclusion, the stealing of elections by the ruling party has dried the wells of democracy and they created a systematic corrosion of suffocation, we can't breathe, of anyone with views different from the ruling party. We need to be the architects of the future, not its victims. But the way we are doing things, we are becoming the victims of the future. Very soon, these young men I'm seeing here, they will be grey hair in foreign lands, having nothing, still talking the way we're doing. Instead of what this kind of a setup must be organized for us to talk about development in our country. And then we need to be uh, okay. Zabu has a culture, as I've said of consultation, compromise. It, was, it means we are prepared to engage with all political formations, with all national forces, with all civil societies, <laughs> as long as it is about the Zimbabweans. This notion, which has been created by ZANU-PF, that is ZAPU because it was led by a, 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 
Ndebele is the Ndebele party. That is wrong. If you look at the top 10 of Zapu during the struggle, five, six or seven were Shona speaking people. Maybe three or four, they were Ndebele. This was, this was and it is and it will be a national party. Hence, I want also to call with guys, as we come in, remember all of us, we began this Lom Sevens in 1957. We have not reached it, where we are going. And what we see, we see the mushroom of all of us. This one wants this, this one wants that, Zap wants that, Sisi wants that. Until we take the word of all these ANC people. Remember these ANC people, the SSP, the Comrade Mabena, including uh, uh, Kosato. They have been telling Zap one thing, and this was also told by MTC that you guys in Zimbabwe, you are too divided on your own, and you are not going to defeat that enemy. They have been telling us that, that we are too divided. There is this same. Um, sitting suspicion amongst ourselves we cannot bring us what together that has become dangerous that's why we are in this predicament therefore we need all sincere political formations and national forces to unite to protect the country we believe every citizen should play an active role in the electoral decision-making process. Promoting of dialogue the way it has been promoted. We need these things to be promoted. So there is dialogue within Zimbabweans. Continuous dialogue. And then we need exchange of ideas as we are doing here. We need to discuss policies. We need uh, to build trust amongst ourselves in order for us to achieve our goals. Remember, electoral politics has failed. Zabu has begun with the engagement of all stakeholders in order to come out with a formidable solution. So what we request, comrades, is that we know the elections have been stolen. They don't talk about that. We know there's a need of a reformed ZEC and it must happen now. And we cannot compromise that in order for us to achieve this, including the reforming of the judiciary. We need to come together as a united front. And we are saying, thank God that we are seeing what is happening to CCC. Which means, even if tomorrow Zapu becomes a formidable force and is voted into power, there might be challenges of taking the power from or Zanu surrendering the power. Because Zanu knows that all those old guys who were in Zipra, they are now old. Some are dead. There is nothing they can do. So we need to be united. We were all supposed to say, all of us come together, we stand up and say, let there be free and fair elections before any election is done. Any election is done. These reforms must be accepted. Not only accepted, it must be in, they must be endorsed by the international committee. committee. And the comments, the international committee is not the West. Talking about everybody here. And this issue of uh, Sanctions. I don't buy that. I don't buy that. You apply sanctions to a country and you still keep your ambassadors in that country. You ap ap sub uh, apply some that country, but you still buy their minerals. You still run your own factories in that country. Comrades, sanctions are being mentioned. But believe you me, there are proxy companies that are busy joining ZANPF and the DPS, ZANPF and EU, ZANPF and America. Why at least we are being told in all these discussions that there are sanctions, there are sanctions. There are even people who are fronted to talk about the end of sanctions which do not exist. I am not affected by any sanctions in any way. What is affecting me is what 
Zan PF is doing. That's why I'm here. That's why things are not going to be as well. Lastly, Dabin was said during the 2013 election, who, he was talking to me. Uh, we we're driving to uh, Pinoni to meet some guys there. He said, you know what? The way we have done things, all of us in Zimbabwe, leadership of all political parties, we have done it that during the 2013 elections, Zimbabwe will never be the same again. <coughs> After the 2013 elections, he said, you remember what I told you? I said, yes. But we are also surprised that Izanu PF ideally, I finished. We spoke about all this. They must change all these things. They must involve everybody. They must do it. And they agreed. That's why I was speaking to you boldly that 2013, Zimbabwe will never be the same again. But it seems we are back to square one. So guys, let's devise a plan. It's what he said. So in other words, there has been some engagement. By the way, the reason why Zapu pulled out of the United Court was because whatever evil things, whatever suppression, whatever oppression Zanu was doing, the Zapu leadership which was in that unit accord was also blamed by the people who were eh, 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 affected by what Zan was doing. That's why there was no other way but to pull out. And remember, don't forget, we did not go to Zanu as Zapu. We went to Zanu as PF Zapu. There are two different things between PF Zapu and Zapu. PF Zapu was born on the eve of 1930, or 1980 elections. How? They had agreed in Lancaster that they were supposed to go and contest the elections as the patriotic front the same year they went to Lancaster. But when they came back, ZANU PF with its tricks, it went behind ZAPU and they registered ZANU PF as a political party to contest the elections until the closing day which was on a Friday, and they were closing, I'm told, at 2 o'clock. At 12 o'clock, this white man, I've forgotten his name, calls Ngomu, Ngomu, when are you coming to register to vote? Can't he, is up not contesting for elections? But you know, okay, we spoke, and then with Zanu, is, this is what's going to happen. No, Zanu has come, and they've registered the election. Mm. Ngomu asked, under what name? Said Anderson PF. Mm. Then Ngomo quickly sent Elder Joseph Msika. Run. When I go and register as PF Zap. Then PF Zap was born. Mm. So I'm saying you may think of Mkakao. We may think of Zipa. Nothing being done, Zanu, is amazing or new. It has always been like, unfortunately, there are good people, very good people in Zanu, who see what is happening. But I don't want us to criticize them just, but we're saying their history has not been a history that has taken Zimbabwe forward or will take Zimbabwe forward. It has just been chaotic. So comrades, elections were stolen. We call upon everybody, Uti. Let's come together. Devise a plan, united so and say with him, what can you do? But our target must be Zek and the judiciary. Thank you. Well, thank you very much, Baba Mpondo. Uh, without trying to give you any ideas, I wish to hear one day who President was up with Kuruma Ganji. Yeah, because. Then I've got a, a correction to make. Jenga uh, Nkomo East, I'm a Zapu child myself. Uh, the only time that Zapu contested as PF Zapu was in 1985. In 1980, they contested as Patriotic Front. That's a correction there. <laughs>